Hi everyone and welcome to What's New in Vectorworks 2012. Once again the development team has outdone themselves, fine-tuning every element and finding new ways to help you accelerate your design process. Vectorworks continues to be the clear choice when considering design software that's flexible, versatile, intuitive, and smart. In Vectorworks 2012, Landmark users will absolutely love the new Object X-Ray Mode feature. By simply holding down the B key, designers can quickly select and manage objects that are obscured by other features appearing above them. So, whether you need to select an object, like a plant, to get its information, or apply the properties from one hardscape to another, such as the hatch and border of pavers to an adjacent walk, or move site features that occur under a tree, like adjusting the location of a bench, you can see why having this ability can certainly save time in managing these objects, without the hassle of changing the visibilities of your classes and layers. Here's a small example project showcasing several of our new features along with some of the tried and true tools that we all know and love. We'll start with a combination of two new features, the instant push-pull mode and our new automatic working plane tool. With these two, you'll cruise through extruding various elements. Just draw the 2D geometry and you're good to go. Notice how the rotated rectangular form automatically clips the ends of the framing and the art can be made to scallop out a nice clean arched underside. This is push-pull at its finest. A quick use of the mirror tool sets up the main stringers and notice how the move by points tool shows the number of duplicates right on the mode bar. And now a quick duplicate using the option drag method and a 90 degree rotation We'll then pick up a couple of quick snap points and move our cross member right into place, just like that. And finally, we'll finish up by moving the cross member up a couple of inches in 3D space. And we'll follow that up with a move by points duplication. All right, we're done. This is just another quick example of how Vectorworks 2012 really can accelerate your designs. And as I'm sure you're aware, it's more important than ever to communicate effectively with your colleagues and other team members. We've made great strides with our DXF DWG support so that you can collaborate with ease. Save your export settings. Gradients can now be imported and exported. Line weight by color has been improved. Clip blocks are now a choice. Image fills are a great addition to the list, as is export only selected objects. Import hatch has been improved, and finally, opacity is accurately translated between CAD applications. The improvements to GIS and new georeferencing features allow unprecedented control of imported and exported real world coordinate data. The first and most popular change is the ability to use real-world coordinates, latitude and longitude, directly in a Vectorworks document. This coordinate system can be set by layer, and different coordinate systems can be applied to different layers within the same document. This is apparent in the stake object improvements, which allow the stake objects to show both the X and Y coordinates as northing and easting and to use latitude and longitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds directly on the stake object label. Alternatively, you can also use the traditional methods rather than degrees, minutes, and seconds for each stake object. This is selectable individually by stake object, so you can choose to use the new georeferencing features or not. In addition to this coordinate system upgrade, you can modify and tune the projection or geodetic properties of pre-existing geometry. In this example, we'll modify the projection to display a more familiar representation of the continental United States. If we check Transform All Geometry Individually, 
each individual polygon that makes up this figure will be transformed to match the new projection. And many commonly used projections are included and loaded with useful default coordinate data. Two new tools have been added as well, Graticule and Great Circle. Graticule for displaying an exact representation of latitude and longitude, and Great Circle for measuring the shortest distance between two distant points on the Earth's curving surface, with the angle being represented either by bearing or azimuth. In this final example, we have an already imported georeferenced image. Georeferencing imported images was possible in previous versions of Vectorworks. What was not possible was exporting this georeferenced information. Here we'll enable the layer that already has the information that was drawn directly in Vectorworks. Now with its new georeferencing, both of these layers line up correctly, and we can export them as a georeferenced image file. Let's see how this is done. We'll select Export Georeferencing File to export a world file along with your exported image. Keep in mind the layers have to be georeferenced. Select the file type, set the resolution, then export the file. Both an image file as well as a world file will be created containing georeferenced information ready for importing into other CAD applications that understand georeferencing efficiently and precisely. Very nice indeed. The stake object improvements in Vectorworks Landmark 2012 have been developed to make laying out and staking plans easier to accomplish. And with expanded labeling options, you'll quickly achieve your documentation style. For instance, as I prepare to place stakes along the corner of this proposed hardscape, you'll see in the stake objects preferences that two new styles of markers have been added the Nun style and the Filled Triangle. In addition to these new styles, a new placement mode has been added, referred to as the Insert Series of Stakes mode. This new mode allows us to place a number of stakes without the need to adjust each stake after placement. And as you can see, this makes placing several stakes quicker than ever. Now after placing the stakes, which mark the corner locations of the hardscape, you can see we used one of the new label references, coordinate x, y. And as you can see, we can easily switch to another new reference type, coordinate x, y, z. As the name suggests, these provide not only the northing and easting from our point of beginning, but the elevation as well. And speaking of elevations, note how difficult it is to see the marker of the spot elevation between the edge of our sidewalk and the hardscape. With the new marker offset, we can move just the marker so that it can be easily read, yet still references the exact position we intend. And lastly, regarding stake object improvements, we can see how we can now position the label with a leader line. This helps to document the stake information without cluttering the object in the plan. Nice. Improvements in Vectorworks 2012 include features that make the site model more user-friendly while providing a more accurate merging of the existing and proposed surfaces. In this example, we're planning for a raised hardscape on the site, and with that, we'll set the elevation of the proposed site modifier to 78. What we may not realize is that anything that goes above or below the site model's maximum or minimum height will not produce visible contours, which means our site model may seem like something is missing. In Landmark 2012, a friendly reminder will help you realize this and give you the chance to revise the minimum and maximum elevations to enable the visibility of all relevant contours. Once these changes are made with the modifier and the site model settings, another new site model feature prompts the user with the popular stripe border indicating an update should occur. Now that's user friendly. While we're talking about site models and modifiers, let's check out the new proposed retaining wall site modifier created on this retaining wall. The modifiers not only dictate the elevations of the site on the front and back of the walls, but now on the sides too. With additional settings for the bottom pad and the site modifiers, the modified site is more accurate than ever. Mm -hmm. 
Improvements in the Hardscape tool in Vectorworks 2012 will provide Landmark users with increased productivity. And the first example of this is in the mode bar. Notice the boundary and path modes are now presented as icons, allowing the user to get started right away in drawing the hardscape. Modes specific to how a path-based hardscape is drawn are also now available in this same toolbar. In using these settings, we can see how quickly a center line can be converted to a path-based hardscape. While this hardscape is still selected, it's a great time to show another time-saving new feature, the ability to convert from a path-based hardscape to a boundary-based hardscape within the context menu. And a fundamental feature that benefits us in the hardscape creation is the offset tool. And the new feature within the offset tool's preferences allows us to close the curves in an offset accurately and efficiently. And with the objects from Polyline now available within a context menu, watch how quickly we can create a hardscape. And speaking of efficiency, the Properties dialog for hardscapes has experienced a revamp as well. Notice how the properties have been grouped, providing a quicker understanding of the hardscape data. VectorWorks Landmark 2012 brings additional improvements in the landscape workspace to help designers accelerate your design process. Let's take a look at the Landmark pull-down menu, where we see a commonly repeated task, Objects from Polyline. This tool, which converts shapes, such as this turf area, into smart objects, like a landscape area, has been moved from the Modify pull-down menu, enabling you to focus your site design efforts in one pull-down menu, making production even quicker. By right-clicking on Objects, we'll see that Objects from Polyline is also now available in the Floating Context menu as well, along with two other powerful and often used commands, change plant grouping, and send to surface. And while on the topic of landscape areas, an improvement to the landscape area object in 2012 is that there is an additional plant distribution option allowing customization. As we see, the automatic percentage method enables the user to let the tool determine the segregated percentage of cover, while the new option allows the user to customize the percentages. This is helpful for those who want to see the plantings mixed together, as this diagram shows. Many have been asking for expanded customization in the plant database, and there are two places where designers can further customize the data in the database, like the hardiness and climate zones. For those who may reference climate preferences for plant qualifications, you can now note a plant's adaptability to a specific climate zone, making it easier to sort based on the type of zone that's referenced. Also, with the trend towards designing your site for water efficiency, your workflow may incorporate a water needs factor for plants, and in 2012, this factor can be added in the water needs section of the database. Another landmark improvement is how the Create Step Wall feature uses new offset functionality to enable more practical uses of the tool. As you begin to convert a wall to a stepped wall object, you now have the ability to place horizontal offsets in the top and bottom of the steps in the wall. As you can imagine, this helps to justify the placement of the peaks in a wall based on how materials govern this overlap. What's more is that a new vertical offset is also available to help in the use of this tool when planning stepped objects like fences that actually occur above the terrain. With RenderWorks 2012, you get seriously improved OpenGL capabilities with OpenGL shadows, better accuracy, and better quality. We think this might be one where you'll need to see for yourself. Creating sun studies in the past with a heliodon seems to have required some fairly sophisticated machinery, the analog version. But for 2012, we at Vectorworks have made it a bit easier with a new digital version, the Heliodon tool. 
The tool incorporates the functionality of the set sun position tool, but then takes it to another level entirely. Just by simply selecting a city, in this case New York, we'll be able to determine a ton of solar data, as well as visually see how the sun's path could affect the orientation of these tennis courts that typically require an east-west axis. These two dialogues represent the control center for your solar animations. Our unique solar marker is a hybrid object containing the light source and it displays information when in top plan view. Here it's easy to dynamically control the path of the sun that you've defined just by manipulating the slider control. Setting up and running solar animations is a snap and by naming up to four walls in the document the shadow angle calculator will help you discover the altitude and horizontal shadow angle. This is the data you'll need to explore the effectiveness and design shading systems. Now here's one of our favorite new features that's really going to save you tons of time. The new Render Work Styles feature puts your personal style to good use over and over again. You can create custom configurations for lighting, backgrounds, and render settings as reusable resources in your documents. Just drag and drop your custom resource onto your file and all your settings will be applied just like that. And better yet, resources can be saved and shared with others. So for this year, we invite you to accelerate your designs in 2012. Increase your efficiency, up your productivity, go where you want to go.